Hi there, welcome to the study for another Dave's Desk. I wonder where you get new ideas from, or where you pick up uh, on changing habits uh, of thinking. For many of us, uh, it will be through the, the media, um, either through uh, social networks, but still probably more likely uh, through the television or cinema. Uh, a lot of the ideas that we take on board uh, we get through stories and narrative. Uh, we think of the world through that sense of, of story uh, and time uh, leads us uh, to delve deeper into stories perhaps uh, that we know well. And so uh, when we come to think of, uh, of ideas, we think of them with an idea of a narrative and a story. Uh, but in the time when a lot of the Bible was written, there was no television, no cinema, no social networks, and so people got their sense uh, of new ideas through story still, but stories presented by speakers, by teachers who would travel around uh, and tell them new stories and give them new ideas that way. And so Jesus, for a lot of his ministry, was seen as this teacher, this teller of stories, wisdom uh, found in the stories he told. And a lot of that teaching ministry happened around uh, Lake Galilee, this uh, mu then much larger uh, expanse uh, of water, this beautiful region of Palestine uh, in Israel. And, and so when we hear Jesus telling stories, we have to picture him in these beautiful surrounding hillsides with lakes, sun shining. And often he's telling these stories with crowds surrounding him. Remember there is no cinema or TV so people would have gone as families to go and hear a new speaker tell stories. And so you imagine families, great crowds, people who are high-born, low-born, uh, people who had everything, people who had nothing. Uh, probably the only thing that united them was that they all had something that they were worrying about. And Jesus's stories picked up on that sense of worry that they would have all had and that often we all have. You know, if we have everything, maybe we worry we're going to lose everything. If we have people's respect, maybe we worry we're going to lose their respect. If we're unsure of where uh, the things we perceive as our need are coming from, we worry about those. If we're unsure of our standing within our work or social sort of setup, we worry about that. Whether we have or have not, we are all united in the fact that we have concerns about what is going to come in the future. And so Jesus spoke into that um, place of concern. He said to this uh, huge crowd as he sat in this beautiful place, so he tells them to look uh, at the birds in the sky and to remark upon the fact that they they don't seem to, to be stockpiling food anywhere. They don't have a pantry. Uh, they don't have a contract with the, uh, with the seeds or with the, the worms to supply them with so much uh, per annum of food. God just provides the food that they need. And then he tells them to look at the wildflowers growing all around them. And he says, you know, do you think they worry about what they're going to wear each day? About where their clothes are going to come from? No, of course they don't. Plants don't wear clothes. And yet, they're dressed in clothes more beautiful than any king could hope for. And the point of what Jesus is saying here is that God delights in giving birds the food they need. God delights in giving the plants the clothes they need. And God delights in giving us the things we need, that we need not worry about where they will come from because God does not struggle uh, to create the things that we need. So trust him and we will have all we need. And that's a real encouragement, but it's also a real challenge because even if we have what we need, we're aware that so many people don't have what they need. That we live all the time with scarcity, but the Bible speaks always of God's generosity. It never speaks of scarcity. Jesus is never rushed for time. He's never short of funds. 
or short of food or short of clothes is always enough. It says uh, elsewhere in the Bible in Paul's uh, teaching that the one who had too much never had too much and the one who had too little never had too little. I may be paraphrasing a little. And the point being that where the person who has much gives, he doesn't have too much. And where the one who has nothing is able to receive, he doesn't have too little. And I think we as, as church need to get our heads into this place of trusting God to give away when we have more than we need. And trusting God to accept help when we know we don't have everything we need. Uh, some of us really struggle to be generous. Some of us really struggle to accept help. Um, but I hope we will become, um, through God's ministering to us, a community that learns how to be generous and a community that learns how to receive gifts. Um, so if you are struggling, uh, ask for help. Because it's a lot easier to help people when we know that they need help. And if you have got more than you need, think about how you can be generous. How that there may be uh, people or groups who need that support. That at the moment you have more than you need. One day you may not have more than you need. But God will be there. And we can trust him in our abundance. And we can trust him in scarcity. Because he loves us and delights to step in and to rescue us. Amen. I hope that's been some encouragement today, perhaps uh, a small challenge. Um, as ever, do please feel free to, to comment, to get in touch, to let me know what you're thinking. Uh, great to hear from you. Thank you for joining uh, with me today and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.